Hey everybody, have a new guitar review for you today. This is a 2016 Fender Jim Root Telecaster. The Fender Telecaster was introduced in 1951 and as far as I know was the first solid body electric guitar. This guitar very closely resembles the original Telecaster in its shape. However, all the features have been updated as per Jim Root's specifications to make this a much more modern guitar than its look might give you uh, an impression of at first. We'll start with the headstock. This is your traditional Fender Telecaster headstock. This one has the extra large logo. Some Telecasters have different size logos. This one has the full size one. Um, this guitar also features Fender, they have a little F on them, these are locking tuners. If you're not familiar with locking tuners, they have this little screw mechanism on the back. And what you do is when you run the string through the post hole, you just tighten that down and then tune it up. It makes your string changes a whole lot easier. Uh, it saves you a ton of time. And if you change strings a lot like I do, um, that means a lot. It's a very nice feature to have. This guitar also features a 12 inch radius fretboard. Now, if you're not familiar with what that means, um, it just means how flat or how curved the fretboard is. The more vintage style uh, guitars, especially Strats and Tellys, have a more rounded fretboard. A flatter fretboard lets you bend notes higher without fretting out. And that's, a, that's most Gibson guitars have a 12 inch radius. And um, Jacksons usually, usually will either be a, a straight 12 inch radius, um, Jacksons and Charvels I should say. Uh, they'll either be a 12 inch radius or they'll they'll compound it to 16 which makes it even flatter up higher just makes it easier to play a rounded a rounded radius is a little bit more comfortable for cording right here and a flatter radius is is better for bending and fast playing up in the higher register this guitar also has a, did I say an ebony fretboard yeah that's pretty unusual for a telecaster has dot inlays, mahogany body. It's a fairly heavy guitar. It's not a, like the heaviest guitar I've ever picked up, but it's got a, a substantial weight to it. This guitar also features an EMG 81 and 60. EMG uh, pickups are my pickups of choice. I always gravitate towards those. I've tried, oh, a ton of different pickups, but always come back to those because they just do what I want them to do. Uh, of course, you know, that's the beauty of about, a lot of about an electric guitar is that you can swap just about anything on it and make it the way you want it to be. So if a guitar comes with something that you're not crazy about, like my Jackson Randy Rhodes R1 did, you can just change it out. Also, this guitar features the Fender US Series Hardtail Bridge, one volume, and a three-way selector. On the back of the guitar... This control plate houses the electronics and also it's got a specially routed battery compartment to power the pickups. Here at the heel, Fender has cut off part of the heel. Kind of hard to see on this white. There you go, that's a good angle. Just lets your hand rest a little bit more comfortably there as opposed to the older style square block. And you're not going to mistake this for like a neck through body guitar that's virtually heelless. But, um, Hey, it's a Fender Telecaster. It's going to be a bolt-on neck. That's one of the, I think bolt-on neck guitars um, a lot of times end up sounding better than sit neck and um, neck through body guitars. They may not look as elegant, they may not look as nice or as high-end, but I think they sound better um, 
I've had some really good experience with bolt neck guitars. This guitar comes in a flat white finish. It used to come in a flat black too with a maple fretboard, but Fender discontinued that one. Um, this one must have been the one that sold the best. This guitar is uh, made in Mexico. Now, let me tell you this. I have, uh, this is my first Mexican made Fender. I have had two USA Fenders before. Uh, both of them were the Jim Root guitars. I had the Jim Root Jazzmaster and the Jim Root Stratocaster. Wish I still had the Stratocaster. Stupid to sell that. Uh, I'll buy it again at some point. Um, does this guitar compare favorably with the USA built Strat and Jazzmaster? Well, not really. Um, it's close, but it ain't there. Uh, this guitar retails for $1,200, and I think it should probably retail for about $900, and I'll tell you why. Um, when I got this guitar, I had to do a few things to it. Um, this guitar was supposedly inspected uh, before it shipped out, and it very well may have been, and uh, something just happened in shipping. But when I got the guitar, the um, if you're familiar with bolt-on neck guitars, you can move the neck on these guitars, or any bolt-on neck guitar. The t these two neck screws were a little bit loose, and the neck had shifted over. That could have happened in shipping. I'm not saying it was the retailer's fault. Um, it's, it certainly wasn't worth sending back for me because, I mean, it's just so easy to fix. All I did was shift the neck back where I wanted it and tighten those screws back up. Another thing was the fret job on this guitar was not quite as good as the USA Jim Root Strat and the USA Jim Root Jazzmaster. I had to do a very light dressing on this guitar to uh, get the action down where I want it. And let me show you, um, these are my action standards. I'm very particular. I'm not a professional player by any means, but I've been playing guitar a long time and I know what I like um, and I know how I want a guitar to feel. This is a 0.88 millimeter Dunlop Tortex pick. And for me, I have to be able to slide that pick onto the 12th fret and have it stay there. Which means the action at the 12th fret on my guitars uh, is under one millimeter. And not only that, the guitar can't fret out. Let me show you what I mean. And actually this one will hold it all the way up the fretboard. So you gotta, the guitar for me has to bend clean and maintain that, that kind of action. Like that. The guitar's gotta perform like that. So I had to dress it just very lightly to get the frets there. Did not have to do that on either the Stratocaster or the Jazzmaster. Is this guitar representative of every uh, Jim Root Telecaster out there? I can't say that. This is just the one that I got. Um, however, after I dressed the frets and just resecured the neck, this guitar does play exactly, almost to the T, exactly like the Jazzmaster and the Strat. So if you're, if you're on the fence or you're considering one of the three, or if you already have, say, the Jazzmaster or the Strat, and you're like, I want to get the Tele, too. Um, the Tele may or may not come out of the box uh, the same way your Strat and your Jazzmaster did. Now, I will tell you this. I had one little problem with the Jazzmaster when I got it. It's minor, but it's still, the Jazzmaster is a $1,500 guitar, and it's worth mentioning. The neck pickup on the Jazzmaster was sunk down into the body and the screws weren't even tightened. Did that happen during shipping? Probably. Um, I can't say for sure. And it's an easy fix. Just like realigning the neck on this one is an easy fix. However, this is a $1,200 guitar and I shouldn't have had to realign the neck. Now, um, I know it sounds like I'm bagging on the guitar. This guitar is a keeper. It is an awesome player. I just had to do a couple of things to it to get it there. Otherwise, the guitar sounds great, the guitar plays great, the guitar looks great. The paint on it is perfect. I haven't found any flaws in the paint, the workmanship. Uh, otherwise, the neck is great. The neck has this perfect, I'm usually a fan of painted necks. This neck has like the perfect satin finish on it. It just feels awesome. It never gets sticky. It's cute.
killer neck. The, the neck shape is good too. It's kind of like a modern C shape. It's very much very reminiscent of a Charville kind of neck shape. You also get this killer G and G um, USA hard case with the guitar. The guitar looks beautiful, presented in the case. It fits well in the case. The case is high end. Um, it just it does that does kind of make me feel a little better about having to dress the frets a little bit. Now you might say I'm pretty particular, and that action specification of less than one millimeter um, is well beyond what Fender's factory specifications are, and that's true. But my Jazzmaster and my Strat set up like that without having to do anything to them. So did my um, Jackson RR1. Is that why the Strat and the Jazzmaster are a couple hundred dollars more than the Telecaster? Can't say that for sure. Don't know. But it's worth considering. Um, this guitar is still a super killer uh, instrument. And I will definitely hang on to it. Mm. EMG 60 of the net kind of has a chimey bell kind of tone. Um, really like the 60 in this guitar. Um, one thing you, you can't, you might knock Fender on a bunch of things, but let me tell you what, they load you up with the case candy. I got the hang tags on the guitar. The guitar also has Fender or a Schaller rather strap locks from the factory. You get owner's menu, you get a bumper sticker, there may even be a ballpoint pen or something in there. You never know. Anyway, cool guitar. Check it out. If you can play one before you buy it, if you buy it sight unseen, um, it may have a couple little things with it. But, you know, that happens to a lot of guitars. Um, however, end of the day, killer guitar. Um, play it first. Check it out. See if it fits you. Pretty much the Strat and the Jazzmaster, in my experience, were good to go right out of the box. Um, the Jim Root Telecaster is still a solid instrument and well worth your time. And it's a beautiful, beautiful guitar. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.